In this modern era, there are many different ways that we can create a family. Some of those include egg donation and surrogacy, but today we're going to focus on sperm donation. So Melissa, can you talk us through the process of how people donate sperm and also how people go about using donor sperm? It's quite a complex process for, patient, for people to donate sperm. So it involves um, a lot of medical checks, counselling, which I think is a really integral part of donating sperm, because um, it is a bit of a lifelong decision that you're making. In Victoria, all of our sperm donors are registered, so they uh, have their details kept, and one day may be contacted by, their, by any potential children that have been made by their donation. So it is a very long process. It's not as simple as sort of what you hear in the movies of turning up with a dirty magazine and getting money for beer, it's nowhere near that easy. Um, but it's still something that we try and facilitate and make it as easy as possible for our donors. They're obviously very generous with their time um, and it's a fantastic thing that they do. So what type of people are we talking about here? Who most uses donor sperm? In our practice, it's mostly single women and women in same-sex relationships um, now. There are also heterosexual couples as well who for one reason or another need donor sperm. Either the male partner doesn't have any sperm or there might be significant abnormalities with the sperm or a disease that they could pass on, in which case they'd be, they'd be also be candidates for donor sperm. I can use my imagination and I think of turkey basting but how does this process actually work when somebody uses the donor sperm? Yeah, well, it's like a sophisticated turkey baster, you could say. Um, most of the time, we would be very carefully monitoring your cycle, working out when you're getting close to ovulation, and timing putting the sperm inside the uterus at the time of ovulation. And it's not like the movies, you don't need to lie down afterwards with your legs up in the air for half an hour. I'm sure many of my patients do. In fact, I heard a patient who put her legs up on the dashboard of the car on the way home. She wasn't driving. <laughs> um, but that's one of the options. The other option is using the sperm from IV through IVF. And it really depends on your own medical history, your own gynae history. There may be other reasons to use IVF as well. So that's, up, that's part of the assessment that you go through as a recipient. And what about the benefits of coming to a clinic versus say doing it at home or asking a friend? I think that's a really good question because we do have a lot of people who find their donors um, might be a family member or a friend, um, they might be someone they found on the internet and they can try at home. Uh, the, the worrisome bit about doing that, the risks of doing that, uh, the main thing is the risk of sexually transmitted infections. Um, one of the benefits of coming through the clinic is that the donors are seen by a doctor. We do all of those tests. We also quarantine their sperm, so they produce some sperm. We freeze it for a few months so we can allow us to repeat those tests three months and do everything we can to reduce the risk to our recipients. So if you are considering exploring the option of sperm donation, make sure you speak to your GP and also seek the advice of a specialist.